welcome to a new episode of the Straight Wrestling Voices of the Indies podcast. I'm your host, Morbo, and with me, as always, everyone's favorite US independent wrestling fan, Sebastian. Thank you very much, as always, for the introduction, Morbo, and welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of Straight Wrestling Voices of the Indies. And our guest today is the man behind one of the most important, one of the most prestigious independent wrestling tournaments in all of independent wrestling. And uh, we are not far away from the next edition, and so we thought this would be the perfect time to have him as our guest today. And with that, welcome, and thank you very much for taking the time, Scott Hensley. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. It means the world to me that the world cares about what we do here in little old Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hey, Scott. So for the people who don't know who you are, who is Scott Hensley? So I am a ring announcer. I am a promoter. And uh, I am the founder of a tournament that we have done since 2015 now called the Scenic City Invitational Tournament. Uh, I've been involved with wrestling since 2006. And uh, so coming up on almost 20 years now, which seems crazy, but I'm starting to work with people's kids that, uh, that like I started to, w when I started out in wrestling, like I, I was working with these people and now the people that show up at shows to wrestle, it's like, oh, that's that guy's kid. Like I've been in wrestling that long. So uh, it's, it's pretty crazy, but uh, I've gotten to do a lot of really cool things in the Southeast region of the United States. Uh, I um, have worked here in Chattanooga, Nashville, Tennessee, Knoxville, Tennessee, um, Huntsville, Scottsboro, Alabama, uh, down near Atlanta, Georgia. I'm regularly the ring announcer for Action Wrestling, and uh, it's so cool to have started something and partnered with people locally to create something that now has a global reach. Can you tell us how did you get into wrestling as a fan, but also as a promoter and a ring announcer? So as a fan, uh, growing up, I can just always remember watching TV and seeing wrestling on TV. And we had a block of multiple wrestling shows that would come on on Saturday mornings. And I can remember uh, when I was very young, just knowing how to turn on the TV and turning it on to this like four or five hour block of wrestling shows. Uh, it would be like, uh, I think WWF had a show at the time and WCW and uh, we had uh, a local USWA and uh, my first real memory is uh, the, the barbershop window incident with Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Uh, I can just remember seeing that and just the story and the emotion, and I was hooked. And uh, my grandmother was actually a big wrestling fan, and uh, she took me to a local show, and uh, I got to meet, uh, this was probably 93 Uh, but I got to meet the Junkyard Dog. I got to meet Rob Van Dam. Uh, I got to see Rob Van Dam as Robbie V uh, wrestle uh, Lord Steven Regal on that show. And I, I can remember just how awesome that match was. And I've gotten to talk to both of those guys since then. Uh, so moving ahead, uh, I started going to local wrestling shows and writing reports. Uh, I would sort of write a review and a recap, and uh, wrestlers are very hungry for feedback, and they, uh, they really like people talking about them, especially in a good way, uh, probably only in a good way. But uh, so I was invited down to a show about an hour from Chattanooga, where I was going to college. And uh, I showed up and, uh, well, actually, that, that's how I got started ring announcing. I'll back up to uh, the first time. So 2006, uh, I went down to a show uh, near Atlanta in, uh, I believe it was Canton, Georgia. And uh, they had uh, all these just crazy good wrestlers down there. They had uh, Claudio Castanoli and um, they had Ricky Reyes and Luke Hawks and... Um, uh, oh, uh, Loki, 
Uh, I think it was a two night thing. And I think Elix Skipper was there the next night, but they, they announced a guy was from Chattanooga. And so I went and talked to him and he said, Hey, I'm doing a local fundraiser show and I may need a referee if you want to show up and help. And I had never been in a ring, didn't have any experience or training or anything like that. Uh, but turns out that man was, uh, his name was Ace Rockwell, and that's who I ended up founding the Scenic City Invitational Tournament with. Uh, so we we partnered up for several years there, but he, he put me in the ring in 2006 as a referee with Abdullah the Butcher, and uh, I was terrified, and Abdullah came after me uh, with his fork, and if I wouldn't have ran, I guarantee he would have stabbed me. <laughs> And he would have been in the right to do it. <laughs> but uh, so that was 2006. And then uh, I had worked on some local shows and then went down in 2000. And I think it was eight uh, to that local show in Scottsboro, Alabama. It was called uh, Ultimate NWA. And uh, there was another young wrestler getting started down there named Corey Hollis, who would become a part of the Scenic City Invitational, would get some really good opportunities down at uh, uh, FCW or NXT, and uh, did some work with uh, AEW and some other places. But we, we were both just young guys getting started and setting up the ring every show. And But I showed up the very first time to uh, write a report about uh, some local friends down there. Uh, one of them was Christian Haim. He was a uh, Southern guy out of Alabama, and uh, he had traveled up to like IWA Mid-South and Chikara and CZW, and he was really one of the first guys from the Southeast to start traveling out to some of these shows, like Dragon Gate USA, some shows like that. So I went down to see him to write a report on the show, the promoter, a guy named Wild Thing Will Owens, uh, he was trained by uh, Robert Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, but Will Owens came up to me before the show, didn't know me. He looks at me. I'm wearing cargo shorts. And he says, hey, he says, do you have any pants with you? I said, no. And he looks at me again and uh, he goes, well, can you ring an ounce? And I said, uh I guess. And he goes, no, there's no guess. He goes, you either can or can't. I said, then I can. And so he yells at his nephew, who's wearing like a nicer shirt with a collar on it. He goes, hey, he goes, give him your shirt. And so he gets his nephew to take off this collared shirt that says Ultimate NWA. And his nephew throws it to me. It's like, I don't know what's going on. He just told me to give me, give you my shirt. So uh, I put on the shirt, and uh, from that night in 2008, uh, I was a rig announcer. And so uh, I got to work with uh, Ultimate NWA for several years, uh, worked with NWA Chattanooga, worked with Saw in Nashville, Southeastern Championship Wrestling in uh, Knoxville, uh, uh, Georgia Premier Wrestling down in uh, Georgia quite a bit with them. And uh, it has been a fun ride. And then to get to sort of the origin of um, the Scenic City Invitational, there was a local promotion just below Chattanooga called Empire Wrestling. And uh, in 2015, myself and uh, Ace Rockwell that I previously mentioned, uh, we went to Empire Wrestling and asked if they would be interested in partnering with us for a two-night tournament, very similar to like the Ted Petty Invitational, which was something that IWA Mid-South had done, where they featured a lot of their own local talent, but then also uh, they brought in some of the biggest names in wrestling. So we wanted to do that, and Empire made it happen back in 2015. And uh, then in 2016, we were able to start going into schools. And uh, then after COVID, we've sort of... Um, I guess regrouped back into uh, the TWE arena, which is, you know, it has its advantages and disadvantages because the TWE arena, obviously much smaller than a school, but at the same time, from a production and from an experience standpoint, like it's so much more intimate and enjoyable, I think. Um, a lot of people complain about the way that sound sort of disappears in a in a, like a big gym and we could pack a gym full of four to 600 people and it still sort of looks empty. 
Who would you name as the biggest influence on you both as a ring announcer and also as a promoter? Hmm. I think for me, ring announcing was just something that I sort of had to figure out. Uh, I mean, I just got in the ring and sort of emulated what I had sort of heard. You know, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. So, uh, you know, there, there's, I guess, some Gary Michael Capetta in there with the cadence. But he wasn't somebody that I really studied. It was more of just like hey, get in there and do it and figure it out. And, you know, there were lots of little tips and tricks along the way of, you know, get out of the way <laughs> and uh, and uh, stop talking over people and stop walking around when you're talking and, you know, different things that you pick up from uh, some of the people that I'd worked with. Um, as a promoter, like, I mean, I... I I took everything from uh, Ace Rockwell of how he worked with schools and how um, we we did a partnership to uh, go in and you know work with these organizations to help them raise money and then for us to get you know a nice venue and a nice platform and that's really been the two goals of Scenic City Invitational is to provide the wrestlers with a nice platform uh, a nice place that they can perform and be seen and then also to work with the community and you know last year we raised several hundred dollars for um, the family of uh, SPO the referee who had passed away and uh, so you know we're looking for causes we're looking for opportunities to give back in a lot of different ways but uh, as far as the influence of promoter you know there was ace and then also i think uh dan wilson uh known as the reverend uh he was a guy that worked also sort of off that model with nwa chattanooga and he also did his hand at ring announcing and he's a guy that to this day like i, I hit him up with all my dumb ideas and occasionally i'll squeeze through one that he's like ah that's not a bad idea and it's like yes <laughs> I, I win on this one. You know, it's a win when I can come up with something that he says is not a bad idea. So I, I think having those guys around that, you know, th they're two guys that will tell you they, they haven't, you know, made a living in wrestling. But at the same time, like they've worked with people who did make a living and they have tons of knowledge as far as uh, the wrestling business and uh, just being able to, to share that knowledge. And I appreciate it so much. If I remember correctly, you first got in contact with Matt Griffin way back in the time of NWA Whiteside? Yeah, so uh, back in the days of MySpace, uh, I used to go through and just add wrestlers. And I had become aware of NWA Wildside uh, because I lived in Middle Tennessee and was about an hour and a half, two hours from where they filmed uh, the Wednesday night TNA pay-per-views uh, back in, I guess, the early 2000s there. So I had seen some of these guys like AJ Styles and Abyss, and I'm like, you know, where are these guys coming from? You know, they're not WWF guys. And so in doing a little research, I found out about a place called NWA Wildside. And so I started adding wrestlers from NWA Wildside on MySpace and just hitting them up with just friendly conversation of, hey, how's it going and different stuff. And uh, one of those wrestlers was randomly Matt Griffin, known as uh, JC North at the time. But, you know, we, we didn't get in deep conversation or anything, but he was just nice to me. I was a fan and he was nice. And. Then in 2015, uh, a guy named uh, Al Getz showed up. Uh, Al does an amazing job with a project called uh, Charting the Territories. Uh, he has some books out, and he's a, a sponsor now. But Al showed up uh, to film the first ever Scenic City Invitational, and he was an integral part of us being able to, to get the video footage out there because that was still pre-IWTV or Powerbomb TV. So there wasn't really an outlet for people to see other than DVDs at the time, which were a huge deal at one point. So we were on the tail end of the, the DVD 
era there. And Al Getz came in to film, and his cameraman was none other than Matt Griffin. So Matt has actually been involved with every single Scenic City Invitational. And uh, I, I just – I don't think that's a coincidence. Like, uh, I think he was sort of put there by purpose, and uh, he has been uh, – right along with Dylan Hells has been the, the – driving factors and the the engine behind doing what I'm able to do. Um, part of running something in a good way is sometimes just knowing when to get out of the way. Uh, it's knowing when people have better ideas than you have and can do things better. And uh, Matt Griffin and Dylan Hells are both better at different things than I am. And so sometimes, uh, you know, Dylan doesn't officially work with us anymore, but he's still somebody that uh, will come and help out and that I can run things by. Uh, but they they have absolutely been amazing. And uh, it's and they, they were both there at the very beginning. Uh, Dylan Hells uh, got on a bus and rode like, I want to say, 10 hours uh, to come to that first ever Scenic City Invitational. But going back to N.W. Whiteside, um, can you tell us what kind of influence N.W. Whiteside had on you and maybe also on resting the Southeast in general? Yeah, so they had uh, they had an affiliation with um, WCW at one point, but then from there on out, like they were running strong and hard, and they had a formula, and that's something that so many places don't have or didn't have. Um, the formula was to work on all these reliable local guys. Uh, tell stories with them, make every match mean something. It's not just random matches happening for no reason. There's actually ongoing developing stories. Uh, they are uh, sort of cascaded, so they're not all ending at the same time. They're not all beginning at the same time. And they featured... The biggest names in independent wrestling, you know, the Briscoes came down. Uh, they had uh, big stars like, um, you know, Dusty Rhodes came in for a, like a guest appearance. And you just never knew who was going to be there. And it kept things interesting and exciting. And there were surprises. And um, it, it was everything that I wanted in wrestling. And then... In such like an intimate environment, the place where they would wrestle, uh, they called it the Church of Independent Wrestling because it was it was an old schoolhouse and I think at one time maybe a church building, uh, but just a very small building that I don't even know if it holds 200 people, uh, but just an amazing place of wrestling history. You know, that's where AJ Styles got his start down there. And so many big wrestlers have come through there. There's a story about um, Kenny Dykstra uh, that would go on to WWE fame and um, uh, Fandango, Johnny Curtis. They, uh, they rented a car uh, that broke down on the way from... Uh, Massachusetts or Maine, they were they met up with one met with the other, and they drove down to Cornelia, Georgia. And I think it broke down, and Bill Barons had to go get them. And I mean, just that was the place to be. And so, in looking at what they did, you know, I want our matches to mean something. I want to have exciting uh, independent stars. I want to reward local, hardworking, reliable wrestlers. And uh, I just want it to be a place that, that people want to be. As someone who organized one of the most important independent wrestling tournaments, what especially fascinates you about wrestling tournaments? I think from a promoter standpoint, it's something... And with what we have with the Scenic City Invitational, we have these standalone events. We have events that happen, and then, uh, you know, we may not have an event for three to six months. But at the same time, we do have additional events. So with a tournament, you get you get a, a final uh, sort of ending to something. But then also, for those that want to keep following along, then you can sort of start planting the seeds for new stories as well. Um, so to be able to 
um, provide a, a one-time answer, big entertainment event is great, but then also to have the dual benefit of continued storytelling. And I think with a tournament, I think it also has the appeal of uh, just legitimate sporting. You know, if you play any kind of um, youth sport or um, any kind of sport, uh, they have tournaments because it's all about, you know, figuring out who is the best. So to figure out who is the best, you got to go through everybody. And so with a tournament, uh, we we've really found that niche and we really enjoy doing that. And it's it's very, very challenging in wrestling because with wins and losses, you know, that's it's part of it. But at the same time with a tournament, it's like 15 people have to lose over two nights. So it's very challenging. Leon, you talked about the beginnings of the SCI, and I would like to know what was the philosophy behind starting the SCI in 2015, and how would you describe the philosophy behind SCI today, or maybe also the identity of SCI today? So in 2015, when we started, I mentioned that we had the local promotion called Empire Wrestling, and the North Georgia Chattanooga area had been rich with lots of local wrestling talent that weren't being seen, but that were very talented. Uh, we had guys that were in that first tournament, like uh, Jason Collins, like KT Hamill. Um, of course, Corey Hollis was still up and coming at that time. And so we had these young guys, we had these veteran guys, and it's like, let's get these guys seen Let's get these guys in the ring with bigger names. Let's challenge them. Let's all learn together. Let's all um, sort of get elevated together with this opportunity. Uh, let's do something that feels like a bigger deal than what is regularly running here. So we came in to sort of piggyback on the success of Empire Wrestling, which you know, at its peak was probably drawing, I would say they drew three or 400 people sometimes. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a very successful local independent promotion, but as I mentioned, like distribution wasn't really a thing in 2015, um, you know, other than DVDs. And so they weren't really doing that. And so it was sort of what I call the tree falling in the woods. You know, if if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? Uh, so unfortunately, a lot of that hard work was just sort of going to the wayside. And with it being in North Georgia, it didn't get a lot of coverage from some of the good people that cover a lot of events. Uh, there's a guy named Larry Goodman that's covered thousands and thousands of events that have happened in the state of Georgia. And he would come up for some of the bigger shows. He had relationships with people like Tank and uh, Reverend and Ace Rockwell and some of those people that were involved in Wildside that became involved with Empire. Uh, but as far as, you know, what our mindset was then compared to now, I think we're trying to get back to what it was. Uh, there's There's been some... I don't know, sort of hard feelings that we went away from what we were initially doing. And I think it's just because the platform got raised to the point of where we didn't want guys that were just local and always going to be local. And so then you get into this sort of cycle of blame and it's like, well, those guys are only local because you're not helping to elevate them. And so it becomes a thing where it's like, well, you know, we appreciate that there's so many talented people in wrestling. We appreciate that, you know, it takes all kinds in wrestling. It takes some of those local guys. It takes the traveling guys. But at the same time, like when we can get really talented and motivated people that want to travel, that want to grow with us, that want to have a bigger fan base and that are often a often a lot of times less troublesome, um, 
you know, we're going to go with those people. So for several years, like we've become more of like a regional kind of thing. Uh, but we are starting to be able to partner more with uh, TWE now. And it's been a partnership over the last three or four years where, uh, you know, Jaden Newman is also the trainer of the TWE uh, performance combine. And he is just pumping out just insanely talented wrestlers. Um, so we are able to start working with these guys now that are able to get in the ring and have a good match with anybody. Uh, they are traveling with Jaden and without Jaden. You know, you've got uh, Cody Manhorn, Aaron Noyes going over to the UK. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, Aaron Wade traveling up to, I think he was in like New Jersey or Minnesota recently. Um, so, I mean, these people are trying to get out there and that's what we want. We want to be somebody that runs alongside, uh, people that are running hard. When we talk about philosophy, we have to mention that Cynic City Invitation is not only the name for the tournament or the weekend, but also a promotion that you used to have. Other events around the year, like the Scenic City Showdown or Tanks Swirldown, both in 2019. Since 2022, the only other events that you have are always the Scenic City Rumbles, in, and the Scenic City Rumbles always in March, which starts like the road to SCI weekend. Was this a creative decision or due to organizational reasons to only focus on the Rumble and the SCI weekend? So right before COVID, we were sort of running on all cylinders and we were being able to go into a lot more schools. And, uh, you know, we have a pretty good track record of being able to come in and raise several thousand dollars in a weekend for schools. Uh, but then once COVID hit, then it's like, ah, you know, I don't know if we want somebody to come in and do events and, you know, everything sort of took a huge step back. But the two events that we've been able to consistently do are the Invitational Tournament and the Rumble, uh, which the Rumble, like I was talking about with the tournament, uh, the Rumble gives you that big winner at the end of the show. But then also we're able to tie that together with our tournament. Uh, which is so neat to do, to, to give somebody the opportunity to uh, choose their first round opponent. Uh, you know, Tank years ago won and got to choose uh, Matt Riddle as his first round opponent. And uh, then, you know, this year, uh, Aaron Wade won, and he's actually going to pick his first round opponent uh, tomorrow night. I'm sorry, tonight. Uh, the days have gotten away from me. <laughs> He's going to pick his opponent uh, here in a couple of hours, actually, uh, at TWE tonight. And he says he's narrowed it down to between Paul London and Matt Mikowski. Uh, so he's either going to choose um, the, the biggest sort of name in the tournament, the most successful person that we were booking this year. Uh, or he's going to book somebody who is potentially the, the one of the best martial artists that we've ever had uh, in Matt Mikowski, a guy that has gone on to, you know, become a part of things like blood sport. And, uh, you know, he's on a lot of the major independents now. Uh, so, you know, Aaron Wade's going to make that decision tonight, and uh, we will see what happens. But it's so cool to be able to tie things together. We really enjoyed having the the trios tournament, but the the costs and the logistics and having to try to squeeze that into one night, um, it's just very difficult. And in order to do a trios tournament over two nights, then it's even more expenses and. Uh, it's just something that we had to decide that it probably wasn't the best. But you mentioned the Tanks uh, Scenic City, is it Throwdown or Showdown? I think it's Throwdown, Tanks Scenic City Throwdown that we did in Cell Creek. Um, I, I will give you guys an exclusive here. So we are returning to Cell Creek. Uh, this is the first time anybody has ever heard about this. And so if people listen to this, then, uh, you know, locally, then th they will know, you know, before we even start advertising it. 
but we will be returning to Sell Creek in uh, September 7th, or on September 7th. And uh, we are going to have just an absolutely amazing show that uh, complements a lot of uh, what happens at the tournament that, you know, features action wrestling, TWE wrestling and beyond. And uh, we're going to go up there and try to raise some good money for them. Uh, They have a great community up there. We've they've shown up before and uh, we hope that they will show up again and we can keep partnering. Something that has become a tradition is the Action Futures Showcase Tournament that has taken place since 2019 as a part of the SCI weekend. How would you describe the Action Futures Showcase Tournament to our viewers who maybe haven't seen it before? Uh, I would say it's my love letter to professional wrestling and all the hardworking young people with less than five years of experience. Um, I'm always wanting to help those that want to help themselves. And that's what that tournament is all about. You know, we've had over a dozen people sign professional contracts that have been in that tournament. And, uh, you know, last year we had uh, we had Jay Malachi in that tournament that uh, is now signed with WWE. We've had Brogan Finley that's now signed. Um, you know, Billy Starks was a finalist. Uh, she's on TV. And I mean, it's. We we just we wanted to add to the experience of the weekend, and at one point someone had suggested, "Ah, oh, why don't we do a softball game between fans and wrestlers?" And it's like, ah, that would be kind of fun, but it's July, or you know, it's I think at that time it was August, so it's like it's going to be really hot outside, and then it's like, and somebody's probably going to get hurt. <laughs> so for me, for me to be able to come up with the futures tournament um it's been amazing because it really is the future of uh not only the promotions that we partner with not only scenic city invitational but we really believe that it's the future of professional wrestling Uh, i've told the story before you know that first tournament that we did uh marco stunt was in that tournament and he won And uh, one of my proudest moments was him coming up after that show uh, when he had messages from major promotions uh, right after that show. He came up to me, hugged me and said, thank you for changing my life. And that's something as a promoter that you you can never forget something like that and never, um, never underestimate the difference that you can make in doing a professionally run event that gives guys a good platform, gets them seen, gives them the opportunity to network with bigger names. Um, it's it's life changing. How important is the Action Future Showcase also as kind of like a, de- a developmental tournament for SCI, especially given that One Called Man does One Futures in 2019 and SCI in 2023, so last year he's a defending champion, and that last year's futures winner Rachel Armstrong will be a part of this year's SCI tournament. So what would you say how important is uh, Action Future Showcase also for the SCI itself? Yeah, I think wrestling is something where people are always looking for that spot and uh, it's the opportunity to come in and earn your spot. Uh, I think over half of the Futures Showcase uh, tournament participants i think over half of them have made it into the tournament uh so it's really an entryway it's a foot in the door um somebody had mentioned to me one time they said i just don't feel like you do anything for younger wrestlers and i said you know we have an entire show for younger wrestlers you know uh with with futures it's just it's so important to us as as a group, as a mini territory to include TWE in action. And uh, I think it's something that people have really come to recognize as a big deal uh, that 
you know, was something for me this year that I, I think I was more excited about booking futures uh, than I was the actual tournament um, this year because of how uh, well the scene has built up with young talent. I mean, you look at who's on our futures tournament this year, and you could put any of them in our tournament this year uh, for the most part, and, and people would be like, yeah, that's cool. Like those people belong. So it's a, uh, it's a great opportunity to reward even more hardworking people. As mentioned before, you not only have the two SCI tournament shows, but you have like a festival weekend already starting on Thursday with TWE the night before, and also with action future showcase on Saturday. Um, was this something you always wanted to do from the start to have like more shows around the SCI? Um, I don't think that was really the vision. I think it just grew into that, though. And, you know, who knows, maybe there will come a time where we add a Sunday show, like a matinee show or something. Um, but I think it has really grown into something that is a destination event. Uh, I mean, Sebastian, you yourself, I mean, to have a fan come all the way from Germany over to, you know, little old Chattanooga, Tennessee for this tournament. Uh, we have a fan coming from Japan this year. Um, I have a, a friend from uh, Seattle, Washington, all the way across the United States. Um, and he's he's flying in to see Makabe's last match this year. Um so I don't think it was ever really the vision, but it's amazing that it has grown into this weekend destination thing that, you know, I hope can continue to grow and continue to get more eyeballs. And uh, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. We, we love being at TWE, but I think at the same time, we would still love to partner with an organization that... Uh, can, can give us a, a really big venue, but also nice production. Festival-like events in wrestling, for example, like the WXW 16 Karat Gold, an inspiration for you? Uh, I mean, in a way, yes. I, I think more of like the WrestleMania weekend kind of things. Uh, you know, how many other events in independent wrestling in the United States, especially like our weekend destination festival event kind of things, you know, there's probably only a couple of them, I guess, uh, you know, BOLA battle of Los Angeles out at PWG, uh, you know, that's something that's always a big deal. Um, I think the Jim Lyman tournament that may be two days, but you know, there's very few of them. So to be able to be in the conversation among anything like like a 16 carat or, um, you know, a WrestleMania weekend or BOLA or just to be in the conversation of those things, uh, it's it's so special. It means so much. And the wrestlers get so much out of it. The fans get so much out of it. Uh, you know, for for wrestlers, it's so much more of not how good you are, but how good people know you are and how good the right people know you are. And, you know, when we have people that work at major companies that comment on our stuff, that share our stuff, that are messaging us, hey, I'm watching tonight, you know, it's it's so cool to know that we have a platform. Speaking of WXW 16 karat gold, at this year's edition, Lennon Hale represented SCI at the We Love Wrestling Wildcard Edition show. How much did this mean to you to see SCI being represented at such an important wrestling in, uh, at such an important weekend in independent wrestling? Again, it's unbelievable. Uh, we started something in North Georgia, right below Chattanooga, that was just meant to be a local thing. Uh, we. We were able to get DVD distribution. Then we were able to uh, start working with like sort of international wrestlers and get international fans through a following on like Twitter and uh, social media. And now to have somebody represent us in an international tournament, um, it's just, I mean, it's beyond words and it couldn't, it, 
we, we couldn't have a better representative than somebody like Landon Hale. Uh, Landon embodies everything that we love. Uh, he is just a freakish athlete, but he's also just one of the the best guys. I mean, the way that he carries himself as a professional in and out of the ring, um, the way that um, he does just good business in and out of the ring. Uh, you know, he, he's a guy that you you want to put your name on him. And we've told wrestlers before, like we're looking for flag bearers. Uh, we want people to put our stamp on and then we want you to wave the flag for us. Like we want a mutually beneficial relationship where we are elevating you, but then you're also elevating us. And I think that's all you can ask for. Before Morbo will talk to you about what is next for you with the upcoming SCI, I would like to know from you, from an episode of Monkey Talk from our friends of the Bald Monkeys, I know that you said that getting Nick Gage to work a family show is one of your favorite things to happen in SCI history so far. Uh, are there other certain moments, matches, or things that you were able to accomplish with SCI that you'd like to look back on? Man, you, you guys have asked some great, well-researched questions. I really appreciate that so much. Your your fandom means so much to me and everybody involved with Scenic City Invitational. Uh, you know, I've talked to people recently about how, like, on Twitter now, I go and I have to translate more tweets because people are tweeting about our product uh, in, you know, different languages now. Uh, but as far as things that I've, I've been able to make happen, um, you know, getting Congo Kong that first year was a really big deal. He was a guy that was really on his way up at that time. Uh, he had just had a big match with Chris Hero, uh, which getting Chris Hero was also a big deal. Um, getting Matt Riddle was a big deal. Um having Darby Allen versus Joey Janela for the first time anywhere ever was at scenic city. And so to be able to say that we did it first, because now I think they've had three or four other matches at this point, um, maybe like seven or eight more, but to be able to say that we did it first is a really cool thing. Um, getting Leo rush was great. Uh, Actually, uh, Ace Rockwell arranged for us all to go down to NXT the night before in Birmingham. So myself, Ace Rockwell, and Leo Rush all went and watched an NXT show together uh, in Birmingham uh, the night before uh, Scenic City Invitational that year. Um, but yeah, Nick Gage was a really cool one because... Like I, I've gone to a lot of deathmatch stuff in the Southeast, um, and you know I have a respect for that because I tell people I'm really entertained by people that do things that I can't do, that I won't do, or that I've never thought of doing. And there's so much of that involved with deathmatch wrestling, and in the tournaments that they do, I feel like it's. Um, just insane you know those would be tournaments that as as a normal as a person that is more normal i'll say um not normal but more normal um you know i, I would be like no i don't want to go to the next round like i've lost i've lost enough blood as it is <laughs> but uh for for those people to to you know have multiple death matches in one night it's amazing Uh, so to be able to have guys like Nick Gage and then we've had, uh, you know, John Wayne Murdoch and uh, Sawyer Wreck and, um, you know, I always will have a, a warm, fuzzy place in my heart for people of all styles with professional wrestling. And so, I mean, I, I named some names there, but just to each year have sort of a, a festival that features so many different backgrounds, so many different styles Uh, so many different flavors of professional wrestling all coming together and it being a situation where most people that come into our tournament, there's somebody that they're not familiar with. And so we want to help people find their next favorite pro wrestler. 
On the first day of this year's SCI, Daniel Maccabi will have the last match of his career. What are your feelings about this match and also about Daniel choosing SCI for this really special moment in his life? It's going to be emotional. Um, Maccabi is a guy that actually came to our tournament as a fan and paid for a ticket, sat and watched a tournament. And then the next year, he was he contacted us and was like, I want in. And uh, Dylan Hales was familiar with him and was like, okay, you know, it, he convinced us, you know, this guy's really good. You know, he, you know, he, he may not be traditionally what we have, but this guy wrestles a very like uh, legitimate grapple style. Um, he's just very different than anything else we have. And he's a tremendous person and professional wrestler. So when he came in that year, uh, you know, he won the tournament his very first year. And I think it also showed people that literally anybody can win. Uh, and then it made him so many people or it made him one of so many people's favorite wrestlers. Um, he is just one of those guys that is just an amazing wrestler in person and for him to have to hang it up or to choose to hang it up before he has to hang it up. Um, you know, he's going out on his own terms and I think there's a lot of power in that in professional wrestling. Um, you know, I think if you follow him on social media, you saw where he recently got married. And so it's a new chapter for him, you know, and you never say never with professional wrestling, but for him to choose to make us his final match for now um it's an amazing compliment um if you have not seen the other match he had with kevin koo from southern underground pro i believe that's on iwtv and they absolutely killed each other as kevin koo often does and as makabe often does um so hopefully nobody's head gets split open or anything crazy uh but i know they're going to leave it all out there in the ring and it's going to be a very emotional match and night and um It's the first time we've ever allowed a non-tournament match on night one. So it's it's special. How would you describe this year's mix of talent in the SCI tournament? Um, every year, there's so much pressure to come up with, uh, you know, a mix that people are going to care about. Uh, you know, we like to have a bigger name. We like to have different styles. We like to have different areas, um, different backgrounds, different things represented. And I think this year's tournament, I think the field captures a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, we've we've got some more heavyweight brawler kind of guys with guys like tank and manders and um <laughs> mad dog Connolly. uh we've got you know martial artist wrestler type people aaron wade tj crawford matt mikowski um you've got technician people like darian bankston uh, adam priest could fit into any of those categories uh, Jaden newman one of the best wrestlers in the world rico gonzalez making a big name for himself and also a guy that just has so much charisma and energy and um you've got guys that have are have an am have amazing ability but have also like Uh, settled into this real character role like Shug D. He's coming in and he just won't shut up. Uh, he, he's uh, he, he's the only un, he's the only undefeated wrestler in Scenic City Invitational history. But he didn't win. He just didn't technically lose last year because he and Jaden um, went to a time limit. So. You know, th there's so much involved. Uh, Paul London, uh, having guys like Landon Hell and Rob Killjoy. Th there's so many different um, possibilities for matches and styles. And the the way that you know 
that or the way that I, as a promoter, know that I've booked a really strong Scenic City Invitational card is when I'm putting it together and it's like, oh, like almost any of these people could go with any of these people and it's fine. Like it's a good match. So, you know, that's we, we like to book these niche things and styles, but also like somebody like Nick Gage. I mean, that's somebody that it's exciting for him to go with anybody, whether it's similar style or whether it seems like it's sort of more of like an opposite style. Um, but you know, we've, we've got characters, we've got, um, more legitimate type people. We've got, uh, technicians, high flyers, um, Everything you could want, you know, uh, I, I don't think I mentioned Rachel Armstrong and Channing Thomas. I mean, two people that are on opposite ends of being loved and hated. <laughs> so uh, it's so exciting to have people also that, that will make people feel a certain way. With the tournament it sometimes lends itself more to more of like a legitimate kind of thing where people aren't sure how to feel about some wrestlers or who they want to win a certain match. And, you know, this year, I think we're going to have some real villains. Uh, I think there's going to be matches where people are like, I absolutely do not want that person to win, or I absolutely want that person to win. And I really like that. And how would you describe this year's mix of talent for the Action Future Showcase? Again, like so many different styles and uh, backgrounds represented. Uh, you know, we, we just released all three matches this week. And uh, so, I mean, that first match, uh, you've got Casey Owens, you've got uh, Mackenzie Morgan, and you've got Jameson Shook. Uh, that's three people that the TWE arena is very familiar with. They're coming in with a background, with stories, with uh, familiarity to that crowd. Um, I think people love McKenzie. How can you not? Uh, Jameson is a tag team champion in that building. Uh, he's very liked. And then you've got Casey Owens, who is, uh, you know, just he has absolutely embraced being hated. Um from working with wrestlers now for, you know, 18 years, there's so many of the heel wrestlers that secretly really want to be liked. And Casey's not one of those. <laughs> like he just, he is, he is a heel. Like when he goes out there, he does his job and he is comfortable with that job. And that's awesome to see. So you've got that style there of three familiar characters and stories to TWE. Uh, then you've got the match of um, Dex Royal, Anakin Murphy, and A-Game. And those guys are going to go 100 miles an hour and it's going to be amazing. Uh, you know, we saw years ago with like the uh, the Will Ospreay ricochet kind of stuff with the, you know, that style of, of it being just um, almost like an action movie kind of thing. Uh, but these guys are all just super pros at that. And so growing up as a kid that loved the X division, like I know that that match is going to, to whet that appetite. That, that match is going to, uh, be a match that is just, um, just firework after firework after firework. And, uh, and then to have, you know, the, the heavyweights that we announced last night with Cody Fluffman, Timothy Bosby, and the wall, Tyler Stevens. Like, I I absolutely love big man wrestling. And uh, those guys are going to suplex each other. They're going to be jumping on each other, throwing each other, you know, giving big boots. You know, it's going to be that heavyweight style that so many people uh, love with professional wrestling. And so... I think we're able to take nine really different people and put them into matches that are also going to be very different. And uh, we'll see what shakes out. The winners of those three first round matches will face off in that final match. And uh, at the end of the night or end of the, the day for the matinee show there, um, we're going to have a futures champion. And that futures champion actually gets a shot in the uh, night two scramble. 
So it hasn't happened yet, but we could actually have someone win futures and win the Scenic City Invitational Tournament um, if if there was an open spot for the night to scramble to fill. Um, we have had uh, that scramble fill a spot twice now. Uh, Gary J filled that spot uh, when uh, Joey Lynch and Anthony Henry went to a time limit. And then um, this past year, Darian Bingston got into the tournament through the scramble um, when Shug D and Jaden Newman weren't able to come to a, a winner. Can you give our listeners information on where, when, and how to watch the SCI Action Future Showcase and the TW the night before? Sure. Yeah, we, we would love for you to come join us live in uh, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's uh, just outside of Chattanooga in a little park called Red Bank, Tennessee. Uh, the address for that is 4825 Dayton Boulevard. It's uh, the TWE Arena. Um, we have events on Thursday night. We have the TWE Night Before event. I believe that has a bell time. It's either 7.30 or 8. Uh, you can contact TWE for tickets or more information about that. They'll be making lots of announcements coming up, I'm sure. Um, we have a two-night tournament. It's 7.30 each night on Friday and Saturday, July 12th and 13th. And... Uh, Then we have the Action Futures Showcase Tournament at 2 p.m. Uh, right there at the TWE Arena. You can watch live on IWTV, and you can get tickets online at sciwrestling.com. People are coming from all over the world. We are super excited about it, and uh, we are going to have three amazing days and nights of professional wrestling. Okay, Scott, that's it. We are at the end of the interview. And as always, the stage is yours. You can plug and promote anything you want. Uh, give us a follow, a like on social media. We are SCI Tournament on uh, X slash Twitter. Um, Scenic City Invitational on Facebook. Uh, we do have an Instagram that I don't update as I should. Uh, I'm Scott C. Hensley on uh, X Twitter. Scott C. Hensley on Facebook. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to be a part of our tournament, if you want to be a part of our scene, if you want to be a sponsor, uh, you know, I, I would love to hear from you, uh, talk wrestling with you, and uh, would definitely love for you to become a fan of uh, what we do with the Scenic City Invitational. And guys, hey, I, I appreciate this so much. I, I never dreamed that... Um, Some fans from Germany would be interviewing me about the stuff that I do with the Scenic City Invitational. So, um, you know, I, I said before we went on air that you guys are, are infinitely more interesting than I am. Uh, the way that, you know, you've you've traveled and followed professional wrestling all over the world. And I, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Scott, for coming on the show. I think this was one of the best shows we have ever done. I really enjoyed listening to your stories from the past and also hyping up the upcoming SCI. And yeah, SCI is around the, around the corner and we are all hyped. So thank you very much. Thank you, as always, Morbo. Thank you, Florian. And especially thank you, Scott, for taking the time to be our guest today. Uh, I can imagine that it's really busy for you at the moment. Uh, organizing everything and preparing everything and um, for me personally it was very important and I think for Morbo and Florian as well to have you on the show with my connection to SCI and also just SCI being such an important tournament for indie wrestling and therefore thank you very much and of course thank you to our listeners for listening to this episode for listening to Uh, for listening to past episodes and I hope you will listen to us in the future again. Goodbye! Goodbye!